Wow, look at that. Here's something we haven't seen in three years. All right. Point one. Enough measurable snow at the Phillips Station west of Lake Tahoe for a snow survey in May. 61. We recorded a snow depth of 59 inches and a snow water content of 30 inches. That is 123% of the April 1 average here at this location and 241% of the May 1 average here at Phillips Station. For perspective, this is what May 2020 looked like but this year is off the charts. So the last time we were here was in May of 2020 when we only measured about an inch and a half of snow water content. So a major difference to what we're seeing here today when we're standing on almost five feet worth of snow depth and almost 30 in about 30 inches of snow water content. So a stark difference to where we were in May of 2020. Why this still matters is because what we're looking at is an example of what could be too much of a good thing. A lot of this data is used specifically for snow melt and flood forecasting. That way we know how much snow melt is coming into those reservoirs and it helps inform reservoir operations so that they know how much water they may need to release in order to make room for that incoming snow melt. And what this measurement showed is the snowpack is melted at a slower than average pace in April. And other than a brief warm up at the end of the month, that trend continues. So what California is left with is over 250% of average of snow and water content, which means the snow sitting in the Sierra is almost like a potential powder keg to cause flooding chaos, in particular in the southern San Joaquin Valley. Historically, Tulare Lake used to be four times larger than Lake Tahoe and was once the largest freshwater body of water west of the Mississippi. It was once so large, look how ancient map makers made California look like an island separated by Tulare Lake. But over 100 years ago, it was killed through diversions of water by cities and farmers. But it has haunted the Central Valley in years where the snow is so great in the Sierra, like this year. There's just too much water to divert or drain. And so the snow belt goes where it has for millennia, to the old lake bed. In comments from past videos, some have celebrated this rebirth of the lake, but it's not just the corporate farms that are being drowned. There's the potential of cities like Corcoran flooding property of farm workers and families evicted by a force of nature they likely never even guessed could happen, much less had a hand in causing. Efforts are underway to raise levees, but with the extreme levels of subsidence caused by years of overpumping groundwater sources, lowering the level of land by several feet, likely more places are vulnerable to flooding than are expected. California's Department of Water Resources is trying to maximize storage, diversion, and usage like these recharge ponds west of Bakersfield to allow water to seep into aquifers, but that's going to do nothing for the subsidence that's already occurred, and we know that there's too much water in the mountain snow that can be handled by the current system, especially if there is a rapid melt. This is a slow-moving disaster that really began long before any of us were alive when man tried to re-engineer nature. As we can see from space, between the beginning of March to the end of April, the water has reclaimed thousands of acres, and some estimate that this lake will triple in size. Unfortunately, because of a clay layer underneath and no natural outlet, it could take more than a year for all of this water to evaporate. The Golden State isn't like Goldilocks. There never seems to be just the right amount. I mean, a year ago, we were all in a completely opposite situation. The snow depth here at the Phillips Station snow course for our April 1 survey recorded two and a half inches of snow depth. Uh, that is only 4% of average uh, for this date. The weather whiplash is truly incredible and why I plan on continuing to cover it. I'm Jonathan Petromala. If and when the big melt happens, I'm going to try and document this on the ground. As an independent journalist, it's a very expensive thing to do on my own, so please, if you enjoy my content, subscribe, like, and share so the algorithm will help spread my stories to a wider audience and we can continue to grow this community. Thanks for watching.